Gesundheit. Oh. If she doesn't get here on time, she's going to be late. I told her. 11 a.m. or it's all over. Is that the brother, Chief? Yeah, that's the brother. Nick the Greek Carmos. Two years Borstal, three years Parkhurst. They say you did it in that Billy Haldane skip with a hatchet. The original psychopath. It's all in his form. I nicked him in 73 for sweating witnesses. Nasty. Nasty boy. Go down, did he? No. Uh, bleeding not guilty, wasn't it? Oh, and this Johnny is Michael Ryan. He was in business with your father in Liverpool. Michael. Johnny, this is an important day. Can we talk later? Sure, of course we can. Thank you, Michael. Hey, old Johnny. friend! Uh, How you doing, uh, son? I couldn't let you get hitched without coming down the motorway to Dad's at your wedding. Nick, this is the famous William Auckland. He worked for Dad in the 60s. And the Mini Cub Wars. Uh, Willie here was my brother's general at that oh, time. I was hardly a general, Aristotle. I was merely the man with the sharpest blade. And this is young Nick, eh? Come here, let me see you, son. Ah, oh, you look great. You know, you were just a wee smart the last time I saw you. That's Willie Mocklin. Last of the cheeky 40. Big Glasgow gang in the 30s. Thank you, Willie. Aferista. Ah, paragalo, Johnny. Yeah, listen, this is a very wise move you've made. Joining two great families together. Let no man put asunder, is that right? Have a nip in, boss. Yeah, I tried to. But he slashed me across my palm with his bleeding razor, didn't he? 20 stitches right down my lifeline. See. Never mind, Chief. Tomorrow's Sunday. Here she comes. That bleeding time. Here you are, Gov. He wasn't too pleased on a Saturday morning. already consecrated you in baptism, and now... <clears throat> Excuse me. Are you John Agamemnon Fitzpatrick Carmos? You really have a great sense of timing, Sergeant. Super cool. Oh, you know me, Johnny. Nothing if not ubiquitous. I have a warrant here for your arrest. Good heavens, man. This is the house of God. I'm conducting a wedding. This is a holy sacrament. That's his maybe, Father. For this man is a wanted criminal. Let's go, sport. 
Board the Skylark, Johnny. What's the percentage in this view, Paul? You know I'll be out on bail first thing Monday. Get in the out, you're bleeding nicked. Hey, Mr. Brillman. Come on. How about giving the man a break? Why don't you nick him after the wedding? Put old Lang's eye, eh, will he? Get stuffed. Go in. You, back off. This isn't really clever, Johnny. Frankie, get in the motor. Frank, this is a mugs game. Get in. Johnny? Johnny! If you had croaked, they'd have thrown the body out, right? The line's jammed with villains briefs from Aberdeen to Lundudno. David, we can't hold 20 wedding guests much longer. It's the weekend. What are we going to feed them on? Let them eat cake, sir. It's Sergeant Bullman I'm worried about. It's your idea, Ron. Evening paper. Finger. Yes? What time? Did you get it on tape? Oh, all right, doesn't matter. We'll send an officer around later. Thanks. Male voice, Southern. Phone the news, 1403. What, six minutes ago? Message is released, Johnny Karmas, by 5 p.m. or the copper gets it. They also want a flight to the Irish Republic and 5,000 quid in cash. Right, at least he's still alive. Mm. Willis, you know these monkeys. How much can we negotiate with them? Not much, sir. Nick Carmos is a nutter, like signed and sealed by the chief medic at Parkhurst. Psycho? Completely do lally, as we say up here. Terrific. Right, well, what's been done so far? Well, Commander CID's in Wales for the weekend, so we're trying to trace him. We put a 501 out on the Granada, but it hasn't been seen. The motorway police are waiting for it to pass, but it hasn't yet. Well, they've changed cars, haven't they? <laughs> You're right. Get uniform to search every garage, lock-up, alley, any place the Granada could be hidden or abandoned. At least we know how much blood he's lost. Yes, sir. I believe we're doing that already. Set up a special ops room. Use the spare room next to mine. Have a line set up with intercept and trace. Speak to the post office. Yes, so we've spoken to the post office. We, we thought this room would do. Helicopters! Sir? Helicopters. I need a couple of helicopters. High altitude surveillance. I've done the course last year. Oh, well, you'll know who to get in touch with then, won't you, sir? Derek, Vanessa. Yes, Carl. Start on the wedding guest. The interview group should have got their statements by now. Right. Just a minute. Let's get the chain of command quite clear, shall we? Sir. In the absence of Commander CID, I am Senior CID Officer on duty, and therefore I am in command of this operation. The negotiations will be conducted by me. I want all detained wedding guests interviewed and released by 1600 hours. I don't want a scandal on my hands. You, Sergeant Singer, will coordinate this operation under my command. Right then, let's get on with it. <laughs> Come on, copper. It ain't that bad. I could do with a wet. <laughs> yeah, me too. Look, next you back with some food and stuff. 
What's the plan? Trade me in for Johnny. Yeah, something like that. You were pissed, weren't you, when you joined this caper? Been on the booze, right? So what? We're here, ain't we, copper? And that's all you've got to worry about. Nick's crazy, Frank. He's psychotic. We could say that you just came along to humour him. Now that he's out of the way for a bit, you, you, you just untie me. You might even end up a hero. I mean, I bet the two families aren't exactly over the moon about this. Shut your mouth. Right, Johnny. You've got your file here. I know all about you. You were arrested today, and you're going to be charged with conspiracy to commit armed robbery. Providing the London team for that Liverpool armoured truck job last November. Now, that charge will go ahead once this business is sorted out. Where's Nick Taken, Detective Sergeant Borman? You tell me, Squire. I don't know this area, neither does he. <laughs> He's really put the ferret in the chicken run, hasn't he? You'd have been out on bail by Monday. We're both the shooters loaded, Johnny. Where are both the guns loaded, Mr. Ryan? Search me, darling. Are we intend to? Has your boy Frank access to any other weapons, Joe? We're not all that close. You know, families. You must be brassed off. Daughter's wedding and all. What the hell are you lot playing at? I'd like my lawyer now. Yeah, well, he's still being interviewed downstairs. Who would Frankie run to, Joe? Where would he go? How did you find this place? Frank, you're in dead trouble, son. You know, you're beginning to sound just like my bleeding old man. <laughs> Got a bit of a hangover, have we? Oh, look, uh, I know this may sound a bit daft, but would you put my gloves in my coat pocket? I sort of feel lost without them. Detective Sergeant George Borman, eh? Yeah. Well, Detective Sergeant, hoist this in. Nick wants to top you. He's got a new Smith & Wesson 9 milli and he's like a kid with a new toy. Yeah, I... I noticed. Do you know what his favourite film is? Bonnie and Clyde. Mm -mm. Clockwork Orange. I'm more of a Walt Disney man myself. Dead trouble now, Mr. Karmas. The newspaper's got a phone call. They're going to murder D.S. Bullman at five o'clock. You know what my chief wants, Mr. Rainbow? Charge them all, he says. Charge them all with accessory to kidnapping and conspiracy to impede the police in the execution of their duties. Now, Mr. Rainbow's a second Judge Jeffries, Harry. He particularly wants you to be charged with the full calendar. Doesn't care how long I keep you. Listen, filth. Get me my lawyer. Your Detective Bullman is beyond my help. Right. Let's get down to basics, old man. You are a retired, a semi-retired, and highly respected villain. Withdraw your approval for Nick's actions and suggest we all work together. Just this time. For a dead copper's gonna make life very difficult for both firms. Carmos and Revel. That, I can promise you. The brothels, massage parlors, taxi companies, gaming rooms. We'll put you out of business. And you know I mean it. This is personal with you, I think. It is indeed, old man. So I'm offering you a choice. 
Cooperate or go under. Who needs a vendetta with the law? In Greek, we have a saying, roughly translated, it means, go stick your head in the car, Zay. Oh, that's really nice, Aristotle. Now, here's a saying that we have. They found the motor in a lockup. Blood on the back seat, one spent shell from a nine mil. We sent the heavy mob down. Team man did for a surveillance and snatch job. They'll never come back for the motor. If Nick's a nutter, he might just chance it. Aren't we clutching at straws, Chief? Between you and me, I think George Bullman's run out of luck. I would ask you to cooperate with us in this respect. Play it down. Give me a chance to get my officer freed. He's badly wounded. Needs urgent help. Have you any reason to believe he might already be dead? No, I don't think so. I think they would have dumped a dead uh, person. But you have no evidence that the officer is still alive? No. Can you comment on the fact that this situation arose as a result of the uh, kidnapped detective bursting in on a wedding ceremony and manhandling the kidnapper's brother out of the church? On the record, no comment. Off the record, and please don't quote me, it may be that my officer was less than tactful about the timing and location of the arrest attempt. Sarge, we've got a call from a public call box asking for a senior CID officer. Post office need about three minutes to locate it. Detective Sergeant Singer, can I help? You know who this is. You got my message? The copper dies at five o'clock. Uh, who is this? Don't act the madam. I've already put one in him. Are you Nick? Call box was in Greenford Road. We had four cars out there within two minutes. Naturally, there was no one there. Sergeant, what did I say at the outset of this operation? That you'd been on a helicopter course. I said, Sergeant, that all negotiations would be conducted by me. With respect, sir, you were having a press conference. I find your attitude offensive. It's like the unit you run. It's slack, elitist, arrogant, and inefficient. With the greatest possible respect, Mr. Rainbow, I think you should withdraw that. How can you defend these interlopers? What have they done for us? What have they contributed? Hey, tell me. Tell me, Sergeant. Nothing. Nothing but bloody trouble. And now this. Bullman gets himself shot and kidnapped. It's all I need. Sergeant? Right, John. Pin your ears back. May I remind you... remind you... me of nothing so much as a wet blouse, sir. Sergeant, have you gone mad? Yes, I must have. To have stood aside and watched... No, contributed to subjecting these officers to a campaign of pettiness, vindictiveness and outright jealousy. And now George Bullman is at the tender mercy of some twisted psychopath from the south of London. And all you can do is argue about where to have an ops room and give press conferences that mean sod all! And, uh, and not a word about how he is. And, and, until the phone rings and then you say like some poor kid, I want to handle the negotiations. Me, me. I've done the course. Well, with respect, I find the whole thing disgusting. I want nothing more to do with it. Sergeant Singer! Eric? Ah, Chief Constable. What's the news on Sergeant Bullman?
Who is it? Oh, open up your book. So what's with the new gear? I could hardly creep about in the morning, sir, Frankie. What did you phone? No, I was out collecting for Dr. Bernardo's, wasn't I? What did they say? Maybe we have a deal. Well, that's great. Yeah. It's not like them. I still reckon we'll have to top you, George. You won't top me, Nick. Not while your brother still stands a chance of getting out. You're a shrewd player. Don't patronise me. You sound like a shrink. It wasn't Shut fun. it! We're going to move out of here soon, Frankie. It's getting too bleeding dark. Please get me weak in this. I don't reckon I'm moving it. Well, you just lost the boat. And what are we going to use for wheels? You can go out and nick some. Yeah, OK. About a half my radius from the phone kiosk, I would say. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Only tea bags, sir, I'm afraid. Spike it up with a drop of the hard stuff there. What's gone wrong here? I'm not quite with you, sir. A police officer under your command has been shot and held to ransom. Eric, you have completely failed to initiate a proper offensive police action to locate, isolate, and deal with the criminals concerned. The canteen is full of off-duty officers. They've come in. They're not deployed. Well, with respect, sir. With respect. Eric, I took you out of division and brought you onto the staff here at Central because you had all the hallmarks of a high flyer. You had a good degree. You worked well in uniform. Your four years at CID were all reported on favorably. I put our three out-of-town detectives under your command, our three strangers, with Sergeant Singer to advise you so that you could flex your muscles a bit, exercise a bit of leadership and imagination. This is a busy desk, sir. I've got a, a hell of a lot of other things to think about. Eric, are you aware there's a police officer out there somewhere who's very likely to lose his life? Of course I'm aware. I'm sorry. I'm afraid I overheard your row with D.S. Singer. He was out of line, but the bloody thing is, Eric, he had a point. If you think that I'm not up to the job, sir. It's not a question of being up to it or not up to it. It's a question of me. Being wise enough to make the best use of a first-rate officer with a great deal of promise. I'd be grateful if you'd come to the point, sir. I've been in the job long enough to know when someone's leading up to something. The point is, Eric, we have an opening for a first-class brain in the uniform branch. It involves coordinating our next traffic computer generation. It carries an automatic promotion when the equipment arrives in two years' time. Sounds a very interesting job, sir. In the meantime, we have a kidnapping case to deal with. Please don't take this personally. I'm putting Sergeant Singer in charge of this operation under my direct command. Singer. He'll be made up temporarily to the detective inspector. Perhaps you'll be good enough to arrange the documentation. Okay. What you get, Frankie? I got a tranny. Good thinking and intrusive. Oh. So where are we off to? Airport. We'll have Johnny meet us at the plane. We'll take the copper with us to Dublin. Political, innit? Do you really reckon the bill's going to hand John over? No bleeding option. Isn't that right, copper? <laughs> Look at him. He knows it. Magic! Hey, just, just a minute. What's with the smile, copper? Smiling at Nick here. Feeling my colour. You got any plans to get smart, copper? Forget it. In. Uh. Oh. I think she's on the Granada. And units watching rebels' houses and halls. Good, good. Um, oh, um, phones. Yes, sir, there's an officer in every post office location. Taking calls live and passing on tapes for collection. Anything red hot is 
patch through here while well, they're still conversing. Okay. I see. And still we're whistling in the dark. Dead right. So I'm releasing Joe Revel and most of the wedding guests. I'll put Willis on him with a ten-man backup. My guess is that Bullman, if he's still alive, will try to work a split between Nick Palmas and Frankie Revel. If Frankie runs to Daddy, he could be in business. Let's hope so. You don't think this will work, do you, George? Well, that's all right. Because if it comes to shooters, you're a dead one. It'll come to shooters, all right. The only way out of the airport is feet first. And what's that supposed to mean? Sass? Sass. S-A-S. <coughs> now, you don't think they're going to send in the army, do you, for a mother-eating copper like you? Do me a favor, George. I know my boss, Sonny. And what's that supposed to mean? Well, look at it this way. Down south, they've had their Borkham Street spaghetti house siege. Big brass up here are dying to have a go at something like that. Puts the local police force on the map. Shut your mouth, filth! You! Don't encourage him! Well, as for the SAS, well, I... They don't let them out socially anymore, you know, because all they ever do is kill people. Diet of raw meat and Polish vodka. Straight up. Get off. Yeah. They make Nick here look like Albert Schweitzer. This airport scene would be right up their street. Yeah, well, we'll just have to see, won't we? Shut it, Frank. This time I mean it. I mean, Mr. Siller, he's back. All right. Yeah. Hello, Nick. It's Dave Singer here. Right. I want Johnny at the airport at 10 o'clock tonight. I want a British Airways plane standing in front of the east perimeter fence. Pilot and navigator only. The east perimeter, Nick? Now, which one is that? Circulation. I'll drive anyway. No, Nick.
that's our Freddy. You mean Frank, Mr. Revel? We always call him Freddy. That's what his sister called him when they were kids. Can I stay here? We'll get him properly laid out in the, uh, in the mortuary. There's never much trouble, you know. You can play the clarinet. Did you know that, Dave? Is that on your bloody files? No, Joe, it's not. I'll get the pathologist to speed things up. You'll need a funeral arranger. Aye. I will and all. Well, you were supposed to be getting some kip. Yeah, well, that can wait, Governor. What are you doing? I don't know. Sometimes when you look at an ops map long enough, it gets like a crystal ball. You can see the ground and the people on it. I think I'm going to do land. No, you should get some rest. How did Rebel take it? How do you think? My guess is the Revel organization are going to go after Nick in a big way. Taking the law into their own hands? Shocking. I reckon they'll have more success than us. Joe Revel runs a big circuit. He's got more mouths on his payroll than me. So if we keep his organizers under other, they might just find what we're looking for. Well, at least I do believe you can read my mind. It's going to be a close run thing, those last few minutes. I better get on out there. Derek. You all right? I'm beautiful. I've issued shooters. You better take one. Well, the skipper and me, chief, we make kind of a point of not carrying. Do it. That's an instruction. And, and Vanessa as well. Where is she? Kipping. I gave her the keys to my pad. It's just around the corner. And you're still here? Wait till I tell George. Don't do that, Gov. It'd be insufferable. Here we are. Sunday papers, some milk. Fresh orange juice. Bag of baps. You promise no tricks, George. I'll sit you up and feed you some baps and milk. Get nutted. Down, Ponza. Now we'll see how you feel about midday. Calling off mid headlines, George. Policeman shot by a London gang in hostage drama. London gang, I like that. Don't look like a gang. These baps are bleeding magic, George. All right. Ta hi. Try that. Oh, terrific. Post office transcripts of Rebels' phone traffic are on their way. He's been busy. Prognosis? Joe Revel has set his boys after Nick. He wants him dead, and they're not going to hang about. That's understandable. The problem is, when one of his executives asked what about the copper, Joe's reply was, he must die too. The stink about that will finish the commerce mob for all time, but make it look like Nick did it. How did you get the exact words, David? At the branch, sir. They've been very cooperative in providing equipment and personnel. But not warrants? I'm not too well up on the legal side, sir. 
It's just that one likes to be aware when the rug one is standing upon is on a slippery surface. I'm going to tell you something. If you had let us go and she had keeping us locked up, that would never have happened. How would you make that up, Willie? Because we could have spoke to the boy, that's how. But you don't know him. You've been running your own show in Glasgow these past eight years. Look, I know the type. And I know his family, sure. I'm telling you, Mr Singer, you could have had your police back by this time without a murder being committed. You've changed your bloody tune, haven't you? Hey, what are you giving us? I'm trying to help you! Sorry. Do you know is your man still alive? He better be. Aye. It's gone beyond the joke now, all right. Look, tell you what. How's about letting Johnny and Aristotle and me put our heads together and uh, see if we can come up with something? Constable. Pick Carmus and his uncle up from the cells. Yes, sir. Come in, please. This is five, over. Where are they, over? Ah, uh, corner of Grange Road and Victoria Street. They're doing a house to house, over. Yeah? Well, I hope they have more than dinner, over. Right. Hang about. One of them's going to the phone box. Same phone box as Nick Tom was used last night, over. Right. It's one of the faces that was at the wedding. Hope your post office lads are awake, over. Don't worry. If you can string more than three words together, we'll get it. Yeah. Right. Uh, kick Vanessa out of bed and get her to meet me. Out. Joe? It's me. I think we've cracked it. I found a couple of working girls who heard most of it. And they also give us a good line on the vehicle, you know what I mean? Anything more from Willis, straight away, OK? It's Nick Carmos again. Call box. All right. Morning, Nick. Stay singer here. How can I help? All right, copper. Is this airliner jacked up or not? First things first, Nick. How is Sergeant Bullman? He's alive. We've got a plane ready for you, Nick. And the money for you. When will you be at the plane? The airline need to know. Nick! Yeah, well, the plan's changed. You tell Johnny I'll phone him at our usual bar in Dublin. Six o'clock tonight. If he's there and he says there's no trouble, you'll get your Georgie back. Nick! There it is, Johnny. He's killed Frankie. Quid your pitch with Joe Revel. If he tops my man, your entire organization will go down the tubes. The illegal stuff in a week. The legal businesses, the betting shops, the blue cinemas, the ground racing. The entire lot out within a month. By hook or by crook. You have my word on that. Uh, Mr. Singer, this is getting out of proportion. Johnny, give the officer our proposition. Mr. Carmos and me, we would like Willie here to speak with Nick. Persuade him to be more reasonable and turn in this caper. As God's my judge, Mr. Singer, I didn't want any part of all this. Your own men will tell you. OK, I'm OK. If I need you, I'll give you a shout. We have no wish for a confrontation with the police, Mr. Singer. Well. Mr. Karma. That's exactly what you got. Hello, zero one. This is call sign five. Over. Go ahead, five. We're in a scrapyard. Location north end of Wolfdale Road. Over. Zero one, wait. Over. 
Derek, we have reports of another sus mobile approaching your vicinity. What have you got there? Over. Uh, I'll take a look. Chief, there's the usual stuff. Loads of junk cars. But they seem to have taken an interest in a beat-up old van. Transit. Over. We have a transit. F registration nicked last night. Blue. Over. Can't see the registration, Chief, but this one's blue. Out. We're in business. Are you sure they're in there? That's the van. Right. Do it. You still want the copper put down? Yes. Come on, Eddie. Let's get on with it. <coughs> Very resourceful, Georgie. <coughs> now, just lie back. There's a good copper. <coughs> we don't want you to start bleeding again, do we? <coughs> Standby blue mobiles. Air mobile confirm your standby. Over. Air mobile, Roger 5. Blue mobiles assembling Wolfdale and Castleton Road. Stun guns. How oh, quaint. This is 5. Go! Go! I'm not Nick Carmus. In the van, is he? You used me, didn't you? You used me to get to them. You used my grief. Dead right, pal. Get them out of here. <laughs> Come on. Hey. Blue mobiles 13, 14, 15. Where are you? Come on, move! The name of the game's changed, Georgie. It's lucky you kept me then. I'm your ticket to Dublin. Right. Yeah. Good thinking, Batman. bloody like it. It's a shambles, Gov. Any sign of George? Yes, sir. Karmas has got him in the van. Falkland! What the hell are you doing? 
It's all right, Mr. Singer. I'm going over to speak to the boy. See if we can get your polis back in the one piece. Here, Willie. Take this. Got to hand it to him, Gun. Son, it's Willie. Listen, your brother Johnny's safe in Dublin, and that helicopter's here to take you. Woo! We knocked it off, Judy. We knocked it off. Aye, Nick, you've knocked it off all right. I've got to hand it to you. And listen, I'm here to see this fair play. So here's what we'll do. I'll go round and open the back doors of the van. You bring out that copper. Right. Ready for the helicopter now. Ready for the helicopter now. What the hell is he waving at? Okay, son. Come on, Georgie. Keep the heat down, Nick. And you're safe from here to Dublin. We're going on our holidays, George. Who'd you come, copper? We we'll meet again, will he? <laughs> Look, son. What? Come on. You all right, George? Don't tell me I've had you wrong all these years, Willie. No. Not me, Mr. Bullman. But we have a saying in Glasgow. Fun's fun, but to hell with nonsense. That wee boy there. He was a mad dug. Just one question, Mocklin. Where did you get the piece? I'll give you a hint. You haven't got one. It's yours, I believe. Let's go, Daddy. 